joining you now, Scott Carpenter, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State, for his thoughts on what has transpired. And in Washington, D.C., Patrick Clawson, Deputy Director for Research at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. Dina Gerges is a democracy advocate with the Washington Institute for Near East Policy, and she joins me now. Matt Levitt, he's the director of the Stein Program on Counterterrorism. We go to David Makovsky, senior fellow at the Washington Institute. I want to take it to Washington. Let's talk to Sonia Chubtai about this. For more insight, I'm joined now by Jack White. He's a defense fellow at the Washington Institute. And a recent poll was conducted by, supervised by the Washington Institute in D.C. Well, for some of these rulers, I think that they're, they're certainly scrambling now to, to try to placate the people. For some of them, it may be too little too late. I think the next several days, maybe even just several hours, will be quite pivotal to see whether or not uh, um, the army uh, holds with Mubarak or goes its own way to maintain its own credibility and its own legitimacy. What does Israel have to lose if there's a sudden change in leadership in Egypt? Uh, they have a tremendous amount to lose. The, uh, the peace treaty with uh, Egypt, 1979, was a strategic victory for the Israelis. So the challenge uh, now is how to translate what is clearly a broad-based popular desire to, for change into some sort of reality that uh, allows for a peaceful democratic transition. Were you surprised when you saw uh, these uh, demonstrations spread throughout the country? No, because there's a lot of resentment to the regime and the fear factor is dissipating as the winds of change come through the rest of the Arab world. Now the Muslim Brotherhood are not the leading presence on the Egyptian street. They haven't been the leaders of this revolution. Like everyone else, with passing time, however, uh, and traditional political forces are riding that wave. I think what we're seeing you know, across the Arab world is, is truly a watershed moment. The question from here really is uh, you know, what happens to all these people? Do they go home? Is this the end of the mobilization? For those of us who have worked on the issue of freedom in the Middle East, uh, this is just a remarkable moment. But Iran It is only a civil war. And remember, these, these countries are straddling a very strategic part of the world. And so Saudi Arabia, Iran, the UAE, we're talking a very important area of the world for the United States. So far, I look at uh, the situation in Jordan, and I see a domino that is not falling. David Schenker, always great to see you, and thank you so much for being here today. We'll continue to follow this, Dina. Great to get your insights tonight. We do appreciate this. You know, you just touched on it perfectly.